my best Even though I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test That I feel so depressed When I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me By thirst, I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired, you first. I'll write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did, sh- I know it hurts. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by. Hello and welcome everyone to Crime and Justice. Oh dear, what a day, what a day. This, I don't think this will be a long one tonight because I'm not, I'm really quite tired because I had an early morning wake up call. Well, perhaps you lot might not think it was early morning, but if I get woken up or get up before 10 a.m. in the morning because of the medication I'm on it literally wipes me out and I got a call about what nine-ish, quarter to nine oh I've got the table for you mum probably about quarter past nine actually because the shop's wrong I don't know anyway, and we thought we'd go for breakfast we'll meet you at Posh Nosh now Posh Nosh is a cafe a cafe Round the corner from where I live. And I do some great, great little meals. Hi. So I thought, well, I don't eat breakfast, but I'll meet you for coffee, I said. Old me a coffee. So I get up, washed, dressed, and then I text him saying, let me know when you're here and I'll meet, I'll leave here. Because it only takes me a few minutes to walk around. And so Bob, I'm just parking up. I went, oh, okay. Okay, I'm out. I'm leaving. And now this was all before 10 a.m. in the morning. I hadn't even had my first cup of coffee. So to get me motivated, it was really hard. So I'm walking around there. And I said, you sure you don't want nothing to eat? I said, no, it's too early. I'm still asleep. Just a coffee. Just a coffee. And all that, they come back then with the table. And then they left. Then they come back after picking the little girl up my granddaughter, to put the table together. These two, like, 
concertina, a coffee table things, whatever they call them. And then I left about four-ish because I had to go and do a bit of shopping and then pick the song up at five. I am absolutely wiped out. How I didn't fall asleep this afternoon after I left, I don't know. I don't know. So I don't think I'll be on here too late tonight because I'm really tired and I need to get some sleep. Anyway, we're talking about Sebastian and from my flyer. Let's see if I know. I have to clear it. It's time to speak. Time to speak, Katie. That's who I'm aiming at. Time to speak. It's been eight months, three days now. Eight months, three days, too long. This little boy, this young lad, I should say young lad, he's not a little boy, a young lad. He went missing on the 26th of February. He was reported missing on the 26th of February. The last visual sighting was on the 25th of February when he was left seeing leaving the Texas Roadhouse, which we spoke about last night. Now, I've noticed on this one Facebook page, as I said, there's a lot of Facebook pages I don't go to no more because it's all vile. It's all nasty stuff about Seth, about Chris, about Katie. It's nasty. And I'm not interested in that. Right? And I've noticed a lot of people are asking about that like, Texas Roadhouse and about, was Chris there? And I thought, hmm, I was talking about this only last night. Now, as I said, before we continue on tonight, as I said about at the Texas Roadhouse, if the law enforcement, some of the county sheriff's office, did their due intent, due to, due to, um, due diligence, they would have, should have, I spoke to all the staff that was on that night, be put a call out for anyone who was at that Texas Roadhouse that night between, say, 5pm and 6.30pm. Right? They are vital witnesses, because that way they, if someone did see him in there, because we, we've not seen any footage of the inside of the Texas Roadhouse, right? So we don't know what sort of mood he was in. Was he happy? Was he tired? Was he, I can't be asked with this, you know what I mean? We don't know what sort of mood he was in. We've only got Katie's word on that. Everything we know about Sebastian, really, from that day, is from what Katie has told us. And to be honest with you, I don't believe one iota of what she tells me, unless it's about Sebastian and what, what happened on the Sunday night. Did he get home from the Texas Roadhouse? Hmm, big question mark there. If he didn't get home from the Texas Roadhouse, there's a load of other questions that are opening up. If he got home from the Texas Roadhouse, what happened? Something happened in that house. Because what she tells us and what we've been hearing doesn't seem to match up. Like she says, she was on the phone talking to Chris from about 9.40ish till 12 o'clock when he told her to bed, go to bed. So I was in bed by, I went to bed at 12 o'clock and I, obviously I fell asleep. Right. We've heard all that. So, Katie, when I say it's time to speak, I don't mean it's time to speak and give us all that garbage that you've been giving us for the last eight months. It's time to speak. If you love your son, as a mother to a mother, I'm speaking as a mother to a mother. If you love your son, tell us what happened that night. Come on. Something happened. Either, from li either after leaving the Texas Roadhouse on the way home or when you got home. But something happened that night. 
And then I've also been seeing a lot of... I also touched up on the fact about the bite mark and scratches on his arm. Now, I've been reading a lot of comments, people saying, dogs like that won't go... When you rough fighting with them, that size dogs, they don't go for the arm, they go for your hands. Right? They nip your hands or whatever. But they don't actually take a bite, go and do a bite. Right? Now, I've got some here. Is it on here? Yeah, it's on here. It's on this Facebook page. Right? Here it is. And I'm going to show it. But I'm going to just say for... This is allegedly in my... You know what I mean? It's We don't know for sure. And normally I wouldn't show something like this. But I'm thinking, why not? It's been put out there on a public Facebook page, well, on a Facebook page, right? And it's the author, Chris Proudfoot is innocent, get over it. Janine Chrissy assigned this, assigned, assigned this conversation 11.50am, right? So Ginny Chrissy must have said something about Chris Proudfoot being innocent. And then she's gone. Jane Jenny and Chrissy, Chris Proudfoot is a M murderer on a liver. Fact. And you can tell him, David, whatever, is going to tell on him on him where he placed the body, which I, I believe is 20.27 miles. I'm going to want to write that down because I'm going to go on Google Maps. I should have written this down earlier. 27.27 miles. Right? In Westmoreland. Tell him Janine knows John something. Richard something and the other players, right? I'm, you can read the names, wrong names if you want. It's on a Facebook page. If you know the Facebook page, you've seen it already. You let that lying pig know I have his number. And I don't give a flying F what you come back with. Tell him those names and ask him if he's ready for more poker plans, right? Now, that to me brings in what I also heard about Friday nights being a poker night. I'm just opening this up. Right? Tell him those names and ask him if he's ready for more poker plans. I have a million dollars like he does. Laugh my F ass off. Tell him, tell him the ones who scripted him are going to floor him. He's a lying pig and I will expose him anywhere, anywhere I can. Sebastian bit him bad in the struggle. Oh, I hate, you know, I don't like that fork. TBI might over have looked it, but they know just like I do, it's only a matter of proving it. And I know the players that can sink his lying ass. Simple as that. Tell him. He knows the names. Crystal clearly. I love how you should put that crystal clearly. I love it. Right? So, let me open my Google Maps up. And we're going to put this in. Westmore, find Westmoreland. Come on. And we're going to see... How when my mouse is stopped doing the jig. <sighs> Come on. Uh, 
the saddest time. Well, as you can see, that is Sebastian's house, right? And now we're going to put in directions. Uh, I can't get rid of this. Go west more. Right. So from that house, from where they live, here, up to all the way up to here, right? It's 54 minutes, that's 29.1 miles. She reckons it's about, and that way, 38.4 miles if you go that way. She said in that message, 27.27 miles, so 25, go, keep going, keep going, that's 28, 28, 28.8, oh, hold on, no, no, come on, 27.2, round about here, why? 27.1, 27.2. So it's round about there. Right? In this area. So let's go and have a look at this area. Shall we? Right, now we can see. I'm just trying to keep them round about the 2.2, right? But we can see here, it's very hilly, very, right? There's a lot of trees, yeah? A lot of little gorges and dips and hills and whatever. Now what's this place here? Is that a homestead or is it a work thing? Looks like a homestead, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a home. Someone's home. Okay. But somewhere around this area. Right? Somewhere around there. She is saying that she, that is possibly where Sebastian is. Okay? Now, how can I put a marker on there? I can't do I, I don't know how to put markers on this one. I know how to do it on Google Earth, but I don't know how to do it on here. Add a destination. Uh. I'm going to. Uh, right, exactly. But we need to round about by this spot. I right, remember here. So if she is right in what she's saying. In that post, 
then I hope she went to TBI or FBI first before putting this out there. I really do. Someone's obviously called her out on something. She's not happy with it, and so she's put all this info out there. Right? Is this another wild goose chase? We don't know. But let's have a look. Oh, I don't. There it is. Let's zoom out a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm just zooming out. Right, that's the line. Kentucky, Tennessee. There's a line there. So we're in Tennessee, this side. I should imagine Kentucky, that side. There's White House, where, where, <laughs> why have I got that picture come up for, because it's not there, right, White House, Tennessee, that's White House, Washington, anyway, it was around there, you used to go to school, and I said, if ever he felt threatened by anything, he used to go back to that school. That's where we liked it at that school. Quite a distance away. Right? Because this is where they live at the moment, right? Yeah. But well, it's quite if they have gone up there somewhere, it's has that area been well, look at Elijah Vu, right? Look at li little Elijah Vu. Where his body was found, that area had been searched twice, from my understanding, twice before. Twice that area had been searched. And then his little poor little body was found by some guy who was getting his land ready for the hunting season. Right? Have they been up past this way again? Right? Have they been round this way? And checked all this again? Right? Because I'm sure I've got to think Uh, that that land would have been searched. I really do. I'd like to think the people who live in these houses here would have searched this land themselves. And I think they need to start going back out there again. Right, I know it's winter. And leaves are falling off the ground, off the trees, so it's going to be a lot harder to find something. But it needs to be searched again. It really does. If just to say, look, what she said is not true. There's nothing there. We have gone through it with a fine tooth comb, which I don't believe they have. But we've gone through it. It's really hard at this time of year. Perhaps when the warmer weather comes, which is next year, springtime, when the warmer weather starts, that's months away. Months away. Right? Are there any cameras on this road? Too late now to check. Because I don't think they keep footage that long, do they, of road cameras, if there's any on that road. Because it's so literally barren out there, isn't it? Look. Few houses and whatever, peri periodically. 
and then you go past there and then you start getting into this area. But here, that's a big area a body, where a body could be hit. Or even here. You're telling me in that week they had a group of people go all through this area. Oh, I'm, I'm fucked. All through this area. And all through that area in that first week. As I said, case, look at Elijah Vu. Someone said when the hunting season starts, that's when we'll find Elijah Vu. And we did. The guy was search, just getting his property ready, his land ready for the hunting season. When he come across a poor little boy. Will law enforcement start another search all round here? Again. And don't tell me you can do that in a week because I don't believe that. Not to search it properly. Not to move the branches and the leaves and whatever else is there. You can't search like that in a week. You can't. Because that is quite thick. See what I mean? It's quite thick with trees and... I'm getting in as close as I can. See how thick it is? Got trees there, then. I don't know if that's like a gold sort of thing, or that might be where it's going down. I don't know, but it could be all trees. That is really thick trees. Look how thick these trees are here. I know I'm back in, going back to, it says, Map data 2024, Google Imagery 2024, Imagery image, image, 2024. So this was all 2024 this year. Why? But come on. You're telling me people have walked through all this. All this thick brush and trees and... You know what I mean? It's that's a road to private property. Is there a road anywhere that leads off? I'm going to do like a little drive thing here. Yeah. It needs to be searched again. That's all I'm saying, is it needs to be searched again. Because if what she's saying on here is to be believed, it needs to be searched again. Right? She could be, as someone said, I think she's a wackadoodle. She could be. We don't know. But like I said, no stone will be left unsearched, right? Now, saying that, I'm going to play the last press release that they did. Listen to what the words very carefully. ongoing with steadfast support from the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, and many other local and federal resources. 
we are exploring every lead that comes in and every tip that comes in. Um, as I said before, the investigation remains ongoing. The entire community is deeply saddened by what is what has occurred. We're all extremely concerned for Sebastian's welfare. I want to encourage the community to stay vigilant to report anything that they think may be of some significance to the investigation, no matter how minute it may appear to be to you. Please call 1-800-TBI-FIND with any tips or the Sumner County Emergency Communications Center at 615-451-3838. We understand the anxiety and the concern that this case has caused in the community. We too share the anxiety and concern for Sebastian. I want to reiterate that we are doing everything we can to find Sebastian and bring him home. Despite the passage of time, the commitment to finding Sebastian... First of all, I'm going to stop it here. Because I had never noticed this before until Seth mentioned it. Oh, ages ago. Literally ages ago. Huh? Why haven't I got a picture of Sebastian up? This is going out on mainstream news channels. All across the USA, yeah? Wouldn't it be nice, or nice just to have a picture of Sebastian so people can see... Oh, is that the lad they're looking for? Oh, I saw him here. I saw him there. You know what I mean? Well, I saw a lag looking the same as that here. But when they don't put a picture up and just a name, they don't know who they're looking for. That's just ridiculous. They never once had a picture up of Sebastian when they done a press release. It remains unwavering. I said this when we scaled the search back. Our commitment to finding Sebastian remains. We will continue to investigate mm -hmm. every possible lead that comes in. The Sumner County Sheriff's Office wants to express our gratitude to the community and the many individuals who have helped in the search, the many individuals who have called in tips, the many individuals who have printed flyers and kept Sebastian's face in the news. Nothing would be, uh, nothing would make me happier than to wake up tomorrow morning with a tip that cracks his case wide. And that's what you've been doing for the last seven and a half months just sitting there waiting for that one oh tip to come in and break open this case that's all i've been doing since they scaled back the search that's all they've been doing okay they did do another search and i'll tell you why what why i think they did that second search around Tangersonville again it's because the same weekend, we had private YouTubers going out there in, with their boats and their dogs searching. And it's like, oh, we best do something about this because we're, being, we're going to be looking silly if we don't go out there looking. Now, they said the reason it took so long to get this search up again is because they've got to organise everything and make sure everyone can be there on that date and all this, like, which I quite understand. But it's a bit coincidental when those other search teams coming in from out of the area that they decide to do that search. Otherwise, they're just sitting there with one man you now, one man each day assigned to taking the phone calls, the tips, one man, one officer. Wide open, and we find Sebastian and bring him home. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Susan Island from the TBI. Thank you, Deputy Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian, in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. And we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up look. We won't let you forget about it. No. No. The YouTubers are very good on that. They don't let anyone forget about something. Looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on weekends. They were done during the day. 
um, that was very visible and it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case, that we are not done. This is, it's gone back to what could be considered good old fashioned police work. Um, interviewing individuals, re-interviewing individuals, checking out leads, rechecking leads. Um, we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had in other jurisdictions who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they I'm glad you said complex cases because TBI are not very good with complex cases. Right, they're reeling off. Look at some of Moon Utah Wells. They said in their interviews, this is a very complex case. Never found some of Moon, some of Wells, have we? This is a complex case. They've never found Sebastian. So that's their track record. That is TBI's track record. If it's a complex case, they are not going to find them. They've worked on to uh, get tips from them. We have um, had, you know, this day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. It's, it's important so we know what's out there. Um, we have been reviewing that, re reviewing it again. Um, we have had other agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't know where Sebastian is right now. So we are pursuing any and all avenues. Um, we do want to caution some, uh, there are some media, social media elements out there who purport to have information that is direct from the in investigation. Um, I just want to reiterate that that is not the case. Um, the, it, some of the information that is being provided on some of the social media channels is inaccurate, incomplete. Um, we don't want this to damage the investigation. So we would just caution anyone who is following the case to just use some caution as to what you see and what you believe. Um, it, it's well, caused a bit of a distraction because a lot of what has been out there in some of the social media channels has been rumors and speculations and theories. And some of that has been advanced and people have caught a hold of it as if it's what's really happening. Um, that has resulted in us getting information that is either, you know, like I said, distracting. It's uh, taking away time and effort from what the agencies, agencies need to be doing as far as looking for Sebastian. Um, we have had so far, uh, as of this morning, 314 tips that have come in through the tip line. It's been mentioned, but I'll say it again. It's 1-800-TBI-FIND. We are also taking tips through email which is tips, uh, I'm sorry, tips to TBI, T-O, TBI, at tbi.tn.gov. Um, what's next? We want people, as Chief Deputy said, to continue to remain vigilant, get uh, vi vigilant, um, get Sebastian's picture out there, continue to share his picture, his information. Um, now that it's getting to be nicer, well, not, not today with the weather, but now that the weather has turned warmer, people it may be more um, inclined to be in their yards. If you go out and see anything that looks different, let us know. Something where perhaps a teenager could have hidden. Um, if you have a, a large amount of property in the area or something that has any kind of holes or unstable footing or ledges where, again, where a teen could have gone to hide or to play, um, and you don't feel comfortable checking it out, let us know. We'll get somebody from law enforcement to go out there with you or to uh, check it out themselves. Um, we just want to make sure that every stone is 
unturned, that there's no stone left unturned. Well, I'm glad she said that as well, because if this woman is to be believed, well, on that post, then that area, that whole area, not just a little bit, the whole area, which I've just shown you on Google Maps, that whole area needs looking at again. Right? Now, oh, God, I'll just let this run through, okay? I'm going to let this run through because there's something I want to go back on. That we want people to make sure that we are looking everywhere we can. We do want to continue to get the tips, but please make it, don't, don't provide information that you might have seen through social media channels. Um, if you have information about Sebastian, about conversations you might have had with him, things he likes to do, places he likes to go, any people he may have mentioned that are in his life, um, that could be helpful in finding out maybe what he was interested in. Finally, uh, we want to thank the community. We want to thank the media. You guys have been really good about keeping his name in the public's eye. Um, that's really important. Um, and thank you for your diligence in providing that information out there. <coughs> and as Chief Deputy said, we also want to thank the community um, from the very first day. Everybody has really been all in as far as whatever they can do to help in the search, to help pass information on. Um, providing water for the, the teams that were out conducting the ground searches. So thank you again to everybody. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Eric Credit. The weather is rolling in. We've got time for some questions. So yes, ma'am. No, hold on. I'm going to stop here because I want to go back to when she first come into it. So much she said. Uh, right, start from here. It's so much she said at the very beginning, near the very thanks beginning. Thanks for being here. Um, we wanted to, we know how invested everybody is in the search for Sebastian, in finding out what happened to him and bringing him home. And we want to let everybody know he has not been forgotten. Nobody's forgotten about him. Nobody has given up looking for him. Uh, at the beginning of this investigation, there was a large uh, land search for him. Um, it was very visible. There were also waterways, lakes, ponds that were searched. Um, there were aerial searches with helicopters and drones and fixed wing planes. They were done at night. They were done on weekends. They were done during the day. Um, that was very visible and it was something everybody was able to see. But we want to let you know that even though there is not that high visibility in investigating this case that we are not done this is it's gone back to what could be considered good old-fashioned police work um interviewing individuals re-interviewing individuals checking out leads rechecking leads um we have been working with other law enforcement agencies who have had in other jurisdictions who have perhaps had some complex cases of their own that they have worked on to uh, get tips from them we have um had you know this day of, of technology with everyone, ha everyone having cell phones and doorbells and ring bells and surveillance cameras. Um, that, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a chore to be able to collect all those and then review them. It's, it's important so we know what's out there. Um, we have been reviewing that, re reviewing it again. Um, we have had other agencies involved. The FBI has been helpful in that. Um, Secret Service has also been helpful in that. Um, so we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. There. The parents have been cooperative, cooperative throughout at the very beginning. Mom? That was in the first week or so. This was in May, uh, April, the 2nd of April. Right? It went missing February the 26th. 
said. I have said the parents are cooperative while the police were looking. Like, she made the statement about if anyone had any info I'd ever spoken to him, just so that we get to know what he liked and what, and what he liked to do and things like that. But wouldn't you get that information off his parents? Because all they tell us is, oh, he likes parks. He loves parks. So everyone's looking in park areas. Have you ever thought, by them saying that it's like a wild goose chase? They are saying these things so people go to this Mary's magical place or whatever, a play area. So apparently, Sebastian loved to go. So there's been several searches by several YouTubers in that area. One even took a spade once to start digging. Because there's some unusual mounds of earth. Right. But. It's like when the law enforcement did their first uh, press release. I think it was on the... He went missing on the Monday. So it'd be Monday or Tuesday after he went missing. Right? They said they spoke to one of the emergency workers whose son is also autistic. And she was telling them about autistic children, what how to approach them. I'm thinking, oh, hold on, hold on. Why have you not spoke to the mother and the stepfather about their autistic son? What what to expect? How to go about finding him? Loudspeakers, like, I know some autistic children cannot take loud noises and they wear them ear headphones, right? Um... So, why didn't they get that information off them? But they didn't. They said they spoke to an EMA whose son is autistic and she was advising them on what the best ways to to go about the search. I'm thinking... All the time I'm thinking, did you not get that information off the parent, off the mother? Yeah, um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, pretty much done what law enforcement has asked of them. Pretty much. Hmm. So, it's not, they have been cooperative in every way possible. They have done everything, everything we have asked them to do. They've done pretty much everything. So what have they not done? Well, we know for a fact that they asked Katie to do a lie detector, and she did. Chris did not. Apparently, Chris was not happy that Katie done this lie detector. But... Chris was telling everyone that they'd both done a lie detector. They hadn't. And then he said, when it came out that he hadn't, it was like, well, they, they told me I didn't need to because they had checked me out. They knew where I was. Hmm. So why lie about it in the first place, then? Why lie about doing the lie detector test in the first place? So pretty much it's not everything. So what is it they did not do? Theft. You only had to phone his works up. Send a, uh, one of your detectives up to the prison to check the cameras. To check 
the logging clocking card. All right. To check the gate clocking because apparently you have to have a card like your scan where the gates open for you to get in at this prison. Right? This is fair enough. Can't let anyone ju just come and go. So they would have had that record of when he entered. They just seen him walking maybe across the car park. They just seen him all the way around the prison complex. Every room he went into. There's cameras. He works on a, the high security part of that wing, of the wings. All right, so he's on camera 24 hours, 24 7 while he's at work. Every day, all the time. So from 7 pm, well, 6 30 pm when he got there. Till 10 past 7 when I say he left the building and walked over to his car. Got to his car by 10, 20 past 7, seeing his phone. Got his phone, checked it. And he had a missed phone call. Then he had a message saying, phone from Chris saying, phone 911. So he phones Chris. And that's when Chris said, don't get angry. But your son is missing. Sebastian's missing. No. Chris, Seth, uh, like, hi Chris, what's up? Um, have you heard of Seth today? Has he messaged you? Has he tried to phone you? And Chris, Seth will just say, well, no, there's nothing on my phone from Sebastian. Why, what's up? Well, he's gone missing. You know, didn't ask him if he'd heard from Sebastian or anything. It's just, don't get angry, your son, son is missing. Don't get angry. Right? So, there's a lot in this interview you could take out. Right? Let's just go back. Whatever we can to keep advance the, the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout at the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. Um, at, at this point, we don't have any evidence. There is not any kind of an indication that there is a criminal element involved. Um, but we are keeping options open. We don't know what has happened. We don't. Hold on. There's no criminal involvement. But please, please tell me how a child who lives in this house with his mother could leave that house without leaving any signs or any scent of him in doing so. Please tell me. When the last time he was seen was at about 6.30ish leaving Texas Roadhouse. And yet you say there's no criminal awareness to this case. I think there's that is criminal. There's got to be. How can a 15-year-old lad leave the house without leaving any trace, any scent, any footprints, anything? Not being seen on ring doorbells, home security cameras, nothing. How can he do that? We know that one camera at 101, Stafford Court, caught those two lights and the car. Now, if he walked past that house with his torch, yeah, that, would, that camera would have picked him up. But is he that knowledgeable to think and plan this ahead and think, Right, I know that has got a camera, so I best not put my torch on. You know what I mean? What lad is going to think like that? Maybe an adult, but a lad isn't thinking like that. The lad is thinking, I've got to get out of here. 
and I've got to go. Right? He'd make a plan of what he's going to do, when he's going to do it, and how. So in which case, he will make a plan, to, and he will give her a bag with some snacks, some juice, water, whatever. He will give her this phone. He will give her this money that he's been saving up in his bedroom. He will give her shoes and a coat. Those two things come to my mind, shoes and coat. He didn't plan this. Sebastian was not a runaway. Whether he's forcefully taken out that house or something happened before that time and he was carried out of that house, I, we don't know. But there's no way he walked out of that house. Or he left that house on his own free will, shall I say. No way. The windows weren't messed with. Nothing. Right? Now, there is another... Hold on. There is... Join me again. There is another one. Right? And it goes back a while. And it's a Vinnie Politon one. Right? From Court TV. And this goes back to when, um, hold on, it'll come up in a minute. August the 18th. This is from August the 18th. Right? Court TV. Right. All the time, every night. So my question right now is, is anyone, anyone still searching for Sebastian? Let me bring in my special guest, someone I know is still searching. Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, is with us. And also joining us, the Rogers family spokesperson, Tony Mathis. Thank you both for being here. Um, appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak with you and the uh, uh, opportunity to speak about Sebastian. Uh, Seth, let me begin with you. Is anyone still searching for your missing son? I am. I have a private investigator that's still working on it. She conducts her searches in private. She has her own volunteer base. We're, we're not going to stop until we find it. Let, let me ask you this, Seth, outside of what you are doing, is this search still active? Let's talk about law enforcement. From my understanding, law enforcement is still searching. No, they're, they're doing not. it privately as well. No, they're not. They're just checking in on tips when they come in. If we get tips, we pass them on to them. Same time we get them. And how is that part going with, with, with tips? Are, 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 are people still providing information when they come across things? And, and what are your thoughts about? We still get information. I mean, we still get emails every day. We have a tip site that is up. A PI put that up. It's a valid tip site for anybody who wants to email or call, wants to be anonymous or whatnot. Tony, I wanted to bring you in the conversation. Um, this is a, a difficult, difficult situation. And I understand the onslaught of public attention that this has gotten. And sometimes that's a big positive in keeping Sebastian's face in the public and getting people to know who he is and think about him. And if they see something, hopefully say something. Um, but obviously there can be downsides as well. Um, how, how is all of this publicity, uh, from your perspective, impacting uh, the search for Sebastian? Well, we don't really believe that any of the uh, media attention, social media attention, any of that is really going to impact what law enforcement's doing one way or another. Um, it, it does impact the father, you know, that I represent, Seth. Um, you know, we thank all the creators out there that continue to keep Sebastian's name out and do it in a positive way. Um, you know, our message to most of the media attention, more social media than mainstream, is that you know, we ask that you cover the case in a positive way. Uh, if you choose 
is not to do that and back away. That's okay too. But uh, any positive support that we can get for Seth while he's looking for his son is, is a big deal for us. And Seth, I know that during the course of all of this, there have been some potential leads that became public, including a, a photograph of someone who seemed to resemble Sebastian uh, at a rest stop in, I believe, North Carolina. How are you holding up through all of this? And where's your level of optimism right now? I have faith. I have hope. Sebastian's alive. We're just going to find him. There is nothing else. Just finding Sebastian. Tony, I wanted to get you in on this as well, in terms of the, as a family spokesperson, do you feel that there is still the, the same level of, I guess, commitment from everyone, the community, law enforcement, media, to make sure that anything and everything is done to find this missing child? Well, Vinny, I think that we, it's our job to keep his name out there in the community. Uh, all of our job on Seth's team, and of course I represent just Seth. Um, you know, it's it's all of our jobs on his team to keep the community engaged. We continue to have events, have vigils, have gatherings, keep his name out there. Um, the media, mainstream media, such as yourself and many others have been very good and very helpful. It's very easy to get interviews if Seth feels up to doing an interview. I think the X factor for us is law enforcement. I think that the communication, um, it's, it's been a bit lacking, at least as far as, as Seth and I are concerned. You know, we don't really know what it is they're doing. We have faith, we heavily back the blue. Of course, you know, Seth is in law enforcement. I live in Oklahoma, we strongly back the blue. Wow, eight months later, wow, August. August, March, April, May, June. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Seven months later, he doesn't back the boys in blue, does he? Well, not Sumner County, anyway. Blue in my community. But, you know, the question that I always ask that we still haven't got an answer to is, you know, just simply tell Seth, are you any closer today to figuring out what happened to Sebastian than you were on February 26th? And quite frankly, we feel like that's a very fair and logical question. We have not got an answer to that. That has to be absolutely excruciating. By the way, folks, as you watch, you'll see on the bottom of your screen numbers and places you can contact if you have any information. Seth, how, how are you holding up? I'm always concerned um, about you uh, going through this. I've spoken with other parents through the years. I, I I got a strong sense from them what it can be like. How are you holding up? It's it's more like one minute at a time, one hour at a time. You know, there it doesn't really seem like it's been five months. It's just you, you lose track of time. I mean, all you're doing is thinking about the next place to go look, what the next thing needs to be done, and just trying to stay positive, trying to stay focused. I'm finding my son and what's the next step to do. What's been the biggest frustration for you so far in the search? Not getting much in terms of information wise. The last thing that I was really informed of by the sheriff's office is they don't have anything stating that he left the house. And that's pretty much, you know, that's it. But Obviously, he's not there, or else we wouldn't be. See, so the police have said there's nothing, no evidence saying he left the house. So where is he? If he didn't leave the house, there's no evidence saying he left that house. Which there isn't. <laughs> because everything that Sebastian held close to him, like, things they like to do is switch his phone, his shoes, his coat, his money, everything, his wallet, are still there. Are still there.
so it's you've got to be my you've got to think well if there's no evidence where that's why i i say this is just my opinion right I'm going to put this up again, so no one gets confused. This. This is just my opinion. If he, if there's no evidence to say he left that house, then as a police officer, a sheriff, or anyone in that in the law enforcement, would you not be thinking, hmm? So there's no evidence to say he left the house, but he's not in the house. So where is he? How could he have left the house without leaving any evidence behind? How could he do that? I don't think the even the best magician could do that. Because with these magicians, it's a trick of the eye. Right, the trick of the eye, a lot of it. So, how did he leave that house? Or was he even at that house? Hmm? The neighbours never saw him outside. Unless he was cutting the lawn, maybe. Or getting the posting. They never actually seen him outside playing in the garden. There's nothing there's nothing in that garden to say a child lives there. Nothing. Now, you'd expect a fifteen year old lad. Okay, he can't play football but there's nothing from stopping him from kicking a ball about. As long as he doesn't head to it or it doesn't smack him in the head. You know what I mean? Uh, there's no climbing frame, but then again, the woman in case he fell and banged his head. There's nothing to say a child lived in that house outside. If you used to walk, if you used to walk that area and gone through the common areas, right, and by his house and looked in that garden when he was there, would you? Would you honestly have thought there was a child in that house? No, I wouldn't. Because when I see houses with children, I see footballs, bikes, skateboards, climbing frames, trampolines. Christ, it could have, they could have even got him a trampoline. That would not hurt him. Right? And I can walk around. I know exactly what house is. I've got children because of what's in their garden. Right? Because of what's on their window sill. So, some have teddies on their windows, some have the money boxes or their dolls or whatever on the windowsill. My grandson's got all his robots on his windowsill. My other grandson's got, oh, what's he got? I think he's got a money box on there and something else on there. I'm not sure what he's got on there, but he's got stuff on his windowsill. And you can see it from outside, so you know there's a child in that bedroom. Right? So, but there's nothing to show from outside that a child lived in that house. Right? Okay. Perhaps he's one of these minimalistic people. He didn't like clutter. I've got a few ornaments that my kids brought me when I they was little. A few. And I've got a load of photos of my grandkids. But I don't, I'm not an ornament sort of thing. I like my candles and my oh, certain lights like very light fairy lights that are having a vase wrapped around the base of a vase and I've got these flowers in it and I turn that on. It's lovely. 
It's really effective. So I, I like things like that, but I don't like to go over the top. I'm very minimalistic in that. And so I'm not an ornament person. I think they're just dust clutter, just dust catches. I'm having enough just to deal with as it is. So I wouldn't want to be spending all my time dusting down and cleaning down a, a load of ornaments. So I can understand you're being minimalistic. Yeah? But come on, there's a child in your home and there's nothing to show that this child lives there. Apart from the fact on the odd occasion he might jump out of the car and get the post as you're coming in or he might run outside to get the post or he might be cutting the lawn. You know what I mean? Very rare, but he does it. Right? He takes the trash out. They might see him take the trash out. But otherwise, there's nothing to say a child lived in that house from the outside. Right, let's take this down. Now I'll put that up again. And we'll continue. Looking for it. No, there's no sightings. There's, there's nothing. Just one poop. Makes Things just don't make sense. It doesn't. Because what did they say about Sebastian? He doesn't like to get dirty. Why? He doesn't like to get dirty. So why would he go out the house with no shoes on? Especially after his dad told us about the fire ants or whatever they call them. When you're trodding that thinking it's a, a, a mound of mud. And it wasn't. Since then, he's never gone out of the house without shoes on. Which I can't quite understand. So we don't like going outside without no shoes on. He doesn't like dirt. He doesn't like bugs and flies. Right? You remember that interview? When she said that? And so can you see a lad going through the, wood, the wooded area? With no shoes on, no coat, with all the bugs, the flies, the dirt, everything. No, I can't. I cannot see a child like that doing that. I've got two grandsons. One grandson would go through the woods, no problem. Would he go through without shoes on? I don't think he would. He'd put some shoes on. My other grandson, would he go through the woods? Hmm. He's not to the point where he doesn't like getting dirty, like, but he just didn't like getting dirty, dirty. If his hands get dirty, he likes to wash them. Right, but he'll play outside in the garden, on his climbing frame, on his swing and whatever. So... Could I imagine him going through the woods with no shoes on? No, I couldn't. Right, and this is a 15-year-old lad. He's not going to go wandering, uh, make plans to just run away on the spur of the moment. Even on the spur of the moment, if he left that house, if he felt so unsafe in that home for whatever reason, and we thought, I've got to get myself out of here, he didn't feel comfortable, He'd have been having a plan, some sort of plan going on in his head. I need my phone. I need my money. I need shoes. I need a coat. I need a torch. Right? That sort of thing would have been going through a child's head. When's the best time to go? I can't go yet because, but I need to get out of here as soon as possible. So if if he felt safe enough to stay there for a little while longer while until his mum went to bed, he's got that time to get that into organised, what he's gonna do. If he had to leave there and then, his mum would have seen him going out the front door. She would have heard him going out the window or out of any of the doors. She would have seen him. 
So he's not going to do it while his mum's up. No. I think we're talking about, first of all, we're talking about a male child that left his house with nothing. A teenager that left the house with nothing. No phone, no switch, possibly no shoes, no backpack. I mean, completely unprepared. That's no money. It's not how he leaves the house to go somewhere with me. I don't expect him to leave anywhere without his phone and way of communication in case something happens. It's just too much doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Seth Rogers, Tony Mathis, uh, stand by, stay with us. When we come back, we have another question to ask tonight. Was Sebastian's mom the last person to see him? But we are just trying to do whatever we can to keep advance the the uh, investigation. It has not gone to a place where anybody has forgotten about him or is not pursuing this. The parents have been cooperative throughout the beginning of the investigation. Um, they have pretty much done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. That's TBI talking about the case of missing 15 year old Sebastian Rogers. So. Parents are cooperating. Now, his, his situation, his, his parents aren't together anymore. So his mom, he has a stepfather and he has a dad. And they're all, they're all in the same area when all of this was happening, the same general area. But I want to um, play you something, which was a, an interview that was done um, with Sebastian's mother, Katie Proudfoot. Her and her husband sat down with the YouTube channel Chronicles of Olivia. And she explained the last time that she saw Sebastian. She said, all right, good night, Mama. Good night, puppies. Love you. I went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. And um, six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning. And that's when he went here. So Sebastian went to bed. They're in the, you know, they're in the same house, different parts of the house. She heard a thud noise, but didn't go to see him. But what was going on with that alleged thug noise? And what, who, who was with him? Was there anyone with him at that moment? Or bringing me to my next question, was Sebastian's mother the last person to see him? Was she the last one? Was there someone else that came to the house that night? Or is there some other story? Our guests are still with us, Seth Rogers, um, Sebastian's father, and Tony Mathis, the uh, family spokesperson. Um, Seth, from your perspective, I, I know you've listened to every potential piece of information that's been uh, available in this case, that's been made available. To me, that thud noise, I've always thought about that, what that could have been if it happened, right? Um, what are your thoughts about Sebastian's mom? Do you believe she's the last person to see Sebastian before he disappeared? I'd say yes. I mean, he was in her house. She's the one that put him to bed. She'd be the last person to have seen him. What do, you, what do you think about that thud noise that she described, the rustling that was going on? I thought about it. I've looked at the house. It's, it, he's, he's lit, his room is on the first floor, right? So his window is accessible from the outside? It would be, I believe. Uh, but I know law enforcement ran, went around the house and stated that none of, this, none of the windows or screens had been tampered with. Before, so as for the thug, I mean, I don't know what she would classify as a thug. I, if I heard something in his room, that would, I know I'd go check on him, just because I want to make sure he's okay. I mean, he's got a medical condition that would definitely mean I need to go check on him just to make sure he's okay. And have you spoken with his mom about that night at all? Have you had any sort of conversation, either just the two of you or with other people there? I've not had a conversation with her just alone and probably won't. Why is that? Because every time I want to speak to her, I'm going to have to speak to Chris. Chris wasn't there. I don't know why he needs to be involved in the conversation about what happened that night. And if he was on a phone call, then maybe he can even tell us what the thud was. Thank you. He said himself, he was on the phone. Perhaps maybe he could tell us what the thud was. But he doesn't.
also sehr gleich nochmal Likes drauf. So man es dem nach. Und ich sag, ich gucke ihn an, so kommt er. Und dann P.O. sagt, well, Kate is already spoken about, about it. Well, we just wanted to get your perspective on it. And he said, well, that's Katie. What she says is her business. I am not talking, saying anything about that thought or something like that. Why? Why won't he talk about that thought? He was apparently on the th phone with her. Well, did he not have heard her so... Sebastian, whatever you're doing in there, you best get to sleep. Oh, well, but was that you falling out of bed? No, Mum. Well, whatever you're doing, go to sleep. You know what I mean? Why can't he answer that question? He doesn't. How about the, the rest of the, of the day leading up to the point that Sebastian got home. Who was the last person other than his mom to see him? And have, have you spoken with that person? No, uh, I guess the last person to see him besides his mom would be, you know, the waitress at the road at Texas Roadhouse. And Tony, as you we try to track and figure out who interacted with Sebastian, where I was going to say it was just a waitress at Texas Roadhouse. There had to be other people in Texas Roadhouse that evening sitting down for a meal. Someone else in that Roadhouse must have seen Sebastian. But you don't hear, even when I played that last press release, yeah, law enforcement never put a call out for anyone to come forward who was at that Texas Roadhouse on the Sunday evening, the 25th of February. Not one call has been put out for them. Why? They're vital witnesses. Where he could have gone, how this could have happened. Um, from your perspective, what, what, is the, what are the lingering questions that, that you see in this case as well? Well, if you're talking about that situation specifically, Benny, I mean, clearly she was the last person that was seen with him. Uh, there has been no evidence that he ever left the house on his own. So in my mind, what would be the opposite of him leaving the house on his own? It would be leaving the house with somebody. Well, the only somebody, admittingly, by Katie, that was in that house was her. So clearly we have some questions there. But, I, you know, my, my bigger question as Seth's spokesperson um, and, and where I would ask Court TV to give us some assistance is, you know, we have video evidence that shows that Seth was at work. We've had all of his electronic devices that have been seized and dumped. We'd like to know why... Seth hasn't been cleared, or, or they need Seth or get him cleared. Well, they have cleared Seth. I didn't realize that. I, I, I just didn't realize that that was the situation. So Not at all. So my guess is if they haven't cleared him, that may explain some of the lack of communication that, that is going back and forth in this case. Good possibility. But what more do you want right. from me? I was at work. I was on video camera from 6 p.m., so after 7 a.m. the next morning, you know, my son should be with me right now. He should be in this house and I should not be looking for him. Tell me where I, I don't gain anything from this. This is not, this is not funny. You know, the fact is, is I'm looking for my son. He's not here. Y'all took my electronics. What more do I, do you want? I mean, do they need my bank records? I mean, you can have them. I mean, I don't understand what I have to do to get cleared. We're willing to do anything to get cleared, Benny. Well, you see, if they clear Seth, now they've got the evidence in front of them, 
to clear him. They know exactly where he was, right? He said, if you want to see my bank records, they can. Right? He's not, hold, he's not hiding anything from anyone. Right? But if they clear him, then they know, law enforcement know, the focus will be back well and truly on Katie and Chris. But I think that is where the focus should be, on Katie and Chris. The fact that perhaps they don't, people won't report anything to Sumner County is because they don't trust Sumner County. Why? Oh, God. Too old. They don't trust Sumner County. Why is that? Hold on. Hold on. Just got a message come to him. Hold on. Sorry. Just something about what's happening in the UK. Nothing new. Anyway, so they won't clear Seth because they don't want people to focus in on Katie and Chris. And I'm sorry, but that's where they need to focus because she was the last one to see Sebastian. She was the last one to speak with Sebastian. Apparently, Chris has thrown him under the bus because he won't answer anything on that thud, even though he was on the phone call with her. Or was he? Right? Now, with the technology today, they can tell when a phone is moving around. Yeah? But he could have said, I was sitting in my five-wheeler, the phone was on the table, on the stand, and I was talking to her on the stand. Well, I was on speaker with her. I don't have my phone to my ear when I'm talking to her. It's on speaker because that enables me to get up and get a drink, to do this, to do that. There's plenty of reasons for that phone not to be moving. So was he actually on the other end of the phone? And who actually stopped the phone call? Was it Katie or was it Chris? If it was Katie, who said, okay, I'm going to bed now, now speak to you tomorrow and, put the, and, tur and turn the phone call off, cancel the call, that will automatically cancel it at his end. Yep. So, where was Chris the Sunday night? We go back to that again. Where was Chris Sunday night? Saying he was on a phone call to Katie from 9.43 or 9.46, as he says, something like that. It's not 9.45, it's 9.43 or 9.46. Yeah. Means nothing. Absolutely nothing. I, I always go on speaker when I'm on my phone. In fact, now... I don't even use, I have my watch on. So a lot of the time, I use my watch to make a phone call. <laughs> my phone can be sitting in the living room, and I can be in the kitchen, or in the bedroom, or wherever, talking to someone. Right? So, to me, where they say, oh, but we can, you can tell when a phone's moving. That means nothing to me. If a phone is not moving, it means nothing. It just means it's on speaker. Right? Or you've got it on your watch. And even though your phone is on the table, you're over at the, in the kitchen or something. Yeah? So where was Chris Sunday night? He knows we know where he was. He, Seth was at work. He's on camera. Where was Chris? Go ahead, Tony. 
there are resources. Yeah, we're, we're willing to do anything to work with them to get him cleared because it does allow us to bring in more resources once he's clear. Um, and, you know, if they if the video evidence, the phone data and whatever else they may need isn't enough, then we'd simply like us to tell them, you know, why is it that he hasn't been cleared? He uh, he did a polygraph test with a well-known FBI photographer that Nancy Grace set up and he passed that with flying colors. So, you know, we're, we're out of time, is, unfortunately. Tony, I'm sorry I have to cut you off there. We're out of time, but thank you both for joining us. We'll still look for those answers as the investigation continues. Right. So, cutting him off like that was a bit bad. He should have gave him a warning look. Okay, Tony, we got 30 seconds left. What do you think? You know what I mean? Not let him go wrong and go. I'm really, really sorry, but I've got to cut you off now. Bye. Right. So where was Chris Sunday night? The 25th. Seth hasn't talked to that waitress. I should imagine the law enforcement have. I hope they have. I hope they've done their due diligence and spoke to the waitress. I hope they spoke to other people who was working that night. Because it's not just one way, like, you could have a waitress at your table, but the table next to you will have someone else. Or a table across from you might have another waitress. Yeah? So that waitress, we'll just see, Katie and Sebastian, did they speak to all the waitresses, all the staff? Did they check all the cameras? They've not put a call out for anyone who was at that staircase, Texas Roadhouse. I've not heard a call be put out. Not in any of the press releases. They've done nothing. Right? Now, for all we know, there could have been someone in that Texas Roadhouse who was travelling through. They may have been in one of them motorhomes, parked up somewhere. And they thought, oh, we'll go to the Texas Roadhouse for a meal. And then Monday morning, get on the way to wherever. There could be someone like that. But law enforcement haven't put a call out for anyone. That person may not even know Sebastian is missing. Because there's still a lot of people do not know Sebastian is missing. A hell of a lot of people. That's what I mean. There's so much interference in this case with the searching, with everything that's going on. Oh, it's closer. So much information. Right, let's. Let me do this. Where are I? Right, I'm going to come back. I'm trying to find where we are. So let's go that thing, right. Um, I'm trying to find it. Play. Oh, there we are. There we are. Home sweet home. Um, so who else could 
could possibly be at this house on the Sunday evening. Because I don't trust that three hour phone call. They've been married, yeah, okay. He he works away from home, right? And as she said, he works a lot of weekends. Why? Why would you work so many weekends if you're working away from home? Would you not take that opportunity to go home and see your lovely wife and your son? Have some quality time at home? Go out for the day Saturday and Sunday, go out somewhere nice. Sleep in your own bed. Have proper meals cooked and or go out for meals with your wife and your son. Would you not rather do that than stay in a five wheeler? So where was Chris the night? And back to the title. Time to speak. And the only one who can speak about this, who truly knows what happened that night, is Katie. And it was after that last interview they did. Uh, she did a couple of other little interviews with news people. But there's only like about four minutes long. Not long enough for her to make any drastic mistakes. Right, so why is why did she stop talking? Chris didn't. Chris only stopped talking when the summer holidays come because he had his daughter there. Will he start talking again? We don't know. That post I read that I showed on here. How do we know who it is? It's that person. It could be someone involved in the case who just going on get a different name. We don't know. And people say, but why now? Why is she coming forward now and saying this? Yes, yeah, she probably had a run in with someone. Right? Because it's got their author, Chris Proudfoot is innocent. Get over it. Janine Creasy, or Chrissy Creasy, assign this conversation at 11.50 a.m. Then underneath it's got Janine Creasy. Chris Proudfoot is a murderer. Fact. And you can tell him David is going to tell on him where he placed the body, which I believe. Now, she can't be dead on, spot on, because she says, which I believe is 27.27 miles, or 27 miles, in Westmoreland. Tell him, Jingy, knows John, Richard, and the other players. You let that lying PIG know I have his number, and I don't give a flying F what you come back with. Right? So she's talking, this is a post, to Janine Chrissy. Right? That isn't the person who wrote that post. It doesn't say who the person is, it just says author. Chris Proudfoot is innocent, get over it, Janine. Right? She's replying to maybe a comment or something that was put up in that post. That she didn't like. Right? No. Hold on. At the bottom, it's got a Jennifer... Summer. A Jennifer Jennings. Chris Proudfoot is innocent. Again, it's going by that title. So she's replying to someone who put a post up about Chris Proudfoot being innocent. Are we to believe what she says? Possibly. 
I don't know. Until law enforcement come back and tell us one way or the other, we can't say it's true. One person put a comment up here saying, well, I mean, Friday was poker party night, so that adds up, that adds to the credibility to me. But the group is run by Chris, so why would you share that if it was true, you know? He wouldn't. And everyone's going, I wouldn't doubt it if that's him or her putting out fake news just to give YouTubers something to talk about and then laugh about it. It wouldn't surprise me. That's his kind of sense of humour. He's got a missing stepchild but will rather go around and spread, spread false stories. Yep. Just to get a laugh out of him. You know what I mean? Let's see what these replies are. Uh, right, it makes me so upset. Um, six replies. Here we go. He loves to play head games with people. He does. Specifically women who seem to be more vulnerable. Hmm. He's been doing this all along. He thrives on the attention. Yeah. Narcissistic, sociopath, little man in a big world who wants to manipulate and confuse people. True sicko. So, it could be Chris in a, an alias. Why? We don't know. But he did have a bite on his arm. But then again, that is general. Public knowledge now, it's being all over the Facebook posts, it's being on YouTube channels, it's being everywhere about that bot. So that's nothing new. Anyone could have put, heard about that. Why? And someone gone, yes, he did have multiple marks on both arms in the exact same places. As if he put someone in a chokehold and they were fighting for their life to escape. That's what I thought when I saw them marks on his arms. Right? As someone said, you come home from your work on the 26th of February after being told your, st your stepson has gone missing. And what do you do that day? Oh, you, or that week, during the week? Oh, you have a bit of rough fighting with your morgies. Right, morgies. That's what they're called. Right. And can you see him letting a dog bite him like that and get away with it? No. As I watched the interviews, I think KP is afraid of CP. Yeah. I believe she's afraid to show her f true feelings because of that. But I'm not defending her. No, I wouldn't be defending her because she let that man do what he did. Right? I don't think that's Chris on that page. Took one look and it appears to be someone having what they call fun. Yeah. I'm not taking too much with what with that post. But just to wipe it clean, I think TBI should get some search parties going in that area again. Not one search party, several search parties because it's a big area. And as you can see on the map, it's heavily wooded. And trees, you know what I mean? It's heavily wooded. I think she's a wacky dude, possibly. You know what I mean?
but it has been sent to law enforcement. But you see, this, people send a lot of information like this. Now, this is taking, say they did put a search on, and have a search, a, a proper search on, right? With boots on the ground. Helicopters aren't going to do the uh, Planes, helicopters, drones are not going to do the job. They're not. Some drones can pick up colour, like, but it's wearing all black. Now, this is another point. If he was running, if he ran out of that house scared, right? And he's running, and he was running through the trees and whatever. You got branches where you can catch your clothes and, and your trousers and things like that. There'd be something, a, a thread of material, a bit of material, something, possibly, to say he went this way or he went that way. But there's nothing. Nothing. I still believe that was not a dog bite. I, and where are those dogs, please? If anyone knows, let me know where those dogs are. Because if you got any information on this dog on this dog thing situation, let me know because <clears throat> I took my email off. Okay, if you like banger. Right? Because, oh, my email was going along the bottom, isn't it, Yeah, Email me, but he, he's again. If you've got any information, if you're watching this on replay, uh, about the dogs, let me know, because you don't hear about those dogs no more. Why not? Right? You don't hear about them dogs. Did you get rid of them dogs because of what they could do, like maybe do a check? They can check the dog's mark, bites against that bite on his arm. There's plenty of enough video evidence, picture evidence of that bite on his mark. So, let's see if I can pull that one. I know I've got it somewhere. I'll find you. Oh, let's see. Where we are. Isn't that good? I find it straight away. Just got to wait for it to come up. Have they got rid of those dogs because they could be tested for their bites? Right. There's another picture of a bite mark somewhere, and you know what I mean. That looks like it's healed up as well. Start to heal up. But why would you be so stupid to come on an interview with short sleeves on? And show his arms? Or did you think people wouldn't be zooming in on those scratches and bite marks? Did you think some YouTubers wouldn't pick up on that? A bit like when she did that signal across her throat. I went around the school and he was gone. And he was. And she stopped talking. But as she stopped talking, she said he was. Stopped talking and did the hand motion. He was what? What? Finito? What? He was... That gets me. So, if this has got anything to do with Sebastian biting him, was he there on the Sunday night? Was there a struggle on the Sunday night at the house? 
Ha? And did she take him out of that house via her car on the Monday morning? Because like I said, she got up at 6 o'clock, rang around a few minutes, and by 5 past 6 she was on the phone. A few minutes later, he was on the phone to the police. Well, he says he phoned the police at 20 past 6. I don't believe that. Right? She was in that car by 10 past 6. So what was he doing from 10 past 6 to, say, 6.30, when I believe he phoned law enforcement, which went straight through to dispatch because the office would be shut. Yeah, it would go straight through to dispatch. So which means this call came through at 6.33. So what happened, what was going on in that like 20 to 25 minutes? We know for a fact, uh, Chris uh, Seth had a missed call of him about 20 past six. So he couldn't have been phoning the police at 20 past six because he's phoning Seth at 20 past six. And why would he phone his phone knowing he'd be at work? He knew he's at work. Why didn't he phone his main manager? Is the the captain, the sheriff, whatever, the head of the prison? Because he would have been released from his duties as soon as he got that call. Which meant he would have been out of there by what? If he phoned at twenty past six, he'd have been out there by half past six, and at that house by. Pff, 7, 7.15 in the morning. But instead, he didn't get there till about 8.15. 8, 8.15 in the morning. So why did they phone his mobile knowing he was at work and he wouldn't have his mobile on him until he got in his car? They knew that. That was just a delay tactic. So like I said, well, we did phone you. Oh, we did. And we text you. Yeah, but I'm at work, mate. You know I don't have my phone on me. You know what I mean? These look like they're healing. Now bear in mind this is a week after Sebastian went missing. That this interview was took and these bite marks were, were shown. So, did the police notice some bite marks? Did Chris Seth even notice some bite marks? Them scratches. Because if it was me, he was at their house on the Monday, the Tuesday, and the Wednesday. He didn't stay the night, he went home on the night time. He was just there during the day. If I seen those scratch marks on his arm, knowing my son was missing, I'd be going, where'd you get the bite marks from? Where'd you get them scratch marks from? You know what I mean? So did Seth ever notice those scratches on his arms? That's another question, that's the question I'd like to ask Seth. If he can remember back to those first three days he's at that house. Did he ever see Chris playing rough with the dogs? And did he ever notice those bite mark, that bite mark and those scratches on his arms? On both arms as well, not just one, both arms. But only one arm has a bite on it, I believe. Which when you do a chunk chokehold, you're gonna get that part of the arm. Just below the elbow. Yeah? It's just below so yeah, you're gonna get that bite mark. You you gotta bite down, aren't you? So it's just below the elbow, not above, below. There's the arm. 
I don't use my mouth. So there's the arm, the top of the arm, the elbow. You know what I mean? There's the bend in the arm. So that's where all the cuts and bites and scra well, scratches were. So, I think this time thing of Chris's needs looking into more. Did he have four days off? Before Sebastian went missing. Was he at the house on the Sunday night? Did he go to his poker game on the Friday night? Where did they play poker? At his house or at his mum and dad's? That's somewhere I'd have to check up on. Where did he play his poker games? At his house? Or where? Because if he's not being home, he's not been playing his poker games, has he? Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Like I said, I'm really tired. I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions. What do you, what, what do you think? I believe Seth has got his timeline covered. He's at work. I believe that. He's got the video evidence. Hi. But where was Chris? Because don't tell me oh, they can pick up when a phone's moving. As I've just pointed out. I've got my phone on um, one of the, what they call a gooseneck. Now on my table. And I have it on a gooseneck because then I can see it a lot of eye to eye, eye. I can see when my phone's flashing up on me or whatever. But I've also got it connected to my watch. So I can make phone calls directly from my watch. So I can be walking around my flat in my bedroom, in the bathroom, in the hallway, in the kitchen. And my phone could be in the, in here, where my laptop is, in, the, in my little office area, which I've got to put some panelling up on the walls and finish it all off, but I'll get there. One day I'll get it all done. Right? And, um, so I can be anywhere in my flat talking to someone. My phone is in the balcony. So like I said, oh, well, your phone was in the balcony. Yeah, but I wasn't. I was in my bedroom. Or I was in the back. I was in, yeah, you know what I mean? I was in the kids' bedroom cleaning up their room, but talking to someone on my watch. So, just them saying while the phone was stationary means nothing. It just means he had it stationary. I hardly ever put my phone to my ear. I always have it. If I do speak on my phone, directly into my phone, I have it on speaker. Very rare do I have it to my ear. It's on speaker. Right, unless unless my grandkids are here and it's their mum phoning, then it goes on speak on to my ears because I don't want them hearing the mum and them getting upset. Right? So or if I'm phoning the mum, I'll do it on, on the phone. I don't do it on speaker. But ninety nine percent of the time I never use it to my ear. I'm always on speaker or or I'm on my watch. So Having a three-hour phone call, saying, oh, well, I was on a three-hour phone call with my wife, means nothing. Just means you was on your phone was uh, connected to hers. Hold on, hold on. Your phone was connected to hers by a phone call. Means nothing, because don't forget she was reading a book and falling asleep. <laughs> very, she multitasks very well, I think. Talking to someone on the phone, reading a book and falling asleep. Hmm, yeah, okay. Yeah. If you believe that, then you believe anything. Anyway. I'm going to leave it there, let you ponder on all of that information again, 
that we've gone through. I'd just like to say thank you to those on X for being here tonight and listening to me babble on again. Thank you to those on YouTube for being here tonight. Please give this video a like, show me some love on X, leave me a comment. I won't get back to maybe it'll probably be tomorrow. I'll get back to any comments left. It'll be tomorrow because I really need to get some sleep. So anyway, so I hope you all have a lovely day. I'm now going to finish off. And I don't know, go to bed. <laughs> because getting up and not, and literally getting up, washing, having a wash, throwing, get my clothes on and out the door within half an hour. It's darn, darn good of me to do that. When I don't, I don't cope well in the mornings. I really don't. All right, so I hope you all have a beautiful day. I don't know what the weather's like over there, wherever you are. Here in Scotland, it's been nice today. Been fairly warm for this time of year, but nice. Anyway, so until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you everyone for being here. I really do appreciate you all. Please give this video a like. And to all you uh, YouTubers watching, please like this video. It does help with the analytics. And those on X, show me some love. Share this video. Comment. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And you can now become a member. So until then, good night. your worst so you can just hide while i work i ain't tired you first i'll write a second third verse about the lies you go disperse you never did i know it hurts but something deep inside won't let me quit i swear that i'm inspired by all